Good evening, good evening. God bless you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining with me this evening. Thank God, thanking God for this privilege that I have to come before you. Amen. Truly, God is worthy of all praise. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining with me. God bless. God bless. Good evening. Come on in. Come on in. Amen. And if you have not done so already, why don't you please share this video on your page so that others will know that we're on. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for your well wishes and all the blessings you are bestowing upon me. And may the Lord bless you as well. Amen. We thank God for this privilege that we have to come boldly unto the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy in the time of need. And we are grateful for the presence of God. And I thank each and every one of you for all that you do. Amen. And thank God for your, your attendance tonight. Amen. On this Monday evening. Good evening to everyone. We're going to begin shortly, but if you have not done so already, please share it on your page so that others will know that we're on. If you got a watch party, create a watch party so that others will come in. If you have a Twitter account or um, YouTube channel, um, whatever channel you have, um, please um, advertise it. Put it out there so that others will know because sometimes the person that needs it may not be on Facebook. They may be on other channels. And so God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for joining with me. Amen. It's so good to see you all. Hey, Afia, God bless you, my sister. Amen. Amen. So we're going to get right into the word because I don't want to keep you guys too long. Amen. And we're thanking God for this opportunity that we have to just glorify the name of our father. For our father is a wonderful God. He is so perfect in our lives and i'm here to tell you tonight that if you don't know him for yourself um you don't know what you're missing you know and so let us pray amen thanking god for this privilege come on let's pray father god in the name of jesus lord we thank you for this time of coming together god we thank you for life health and strength and for all that you have given us we thank you, Lord God, for your blessings time and time again and how, God, you make a way for us out of no way. And Father, your word is truth. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And so we thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done. And we thank you for all that you're doing. So God, bless our time together. Grant unto us the full and complete understanding and Holy Spirit of the living God. I pray, God, that you would grant unto me free flow, that your word might proceed forth fluidly and with power and authority. Lord God, we thank you for your word is excellent. It is just. It is pure. And we give your name glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless each and every one of you. Um, God bless you. Hey, my brother, uh, Larry, Larry Stevens. God bless you, man. I, I saw that you had called me. I um, wasn't able to get, grab your call, but God bless you, man. Amen. And so let's get into the word of God. Tonight, what we're talking about is connections don't always connect. Connections don't always connect. Or in other words, every connection that you have, every sort of setup that you get set up with, is not necessarily the right setup for you. I know that there was a time in my life where if, if I asked the Lord something and the Lord didn't say anything, I just said, okay, well, God didn't tell me no, so I can do it, right? But the truth of the matter is, just because heaven is silent doesn't mean heaven agrees with you, right? There's a lot of folks who says, you know, they know that the person that they connected with, the marriage that they got in touch with, they know it's not God's perfect will, but because God didn't kill everybody and because God didn't burn down the church, you feel like, oh, the Lord's blessed this relationship, right? But listen, not every connection connects, right? And I'm gonna tell you this, why? Because one of the things that, you know, when I go fishing, right? Um, there are certain things that when, when you talk about water, 
there are certain things that can cause water to flow in a different direction. Uh, beavers understand that if they block uh, a certain point where the water is coming out, then the water levels will rise at a level that is suitable for them to make their habitat. So oftentimes what farmers have to do is go through their land and, and tear up beavers dams in order to allow the water to flow like it's supposed to flow, right? And sometimes some of us don't realize how certain connections we have, although they are connections that may offer some benefit, that they are hindering certain flows. My God, they are hindering certain flows. Some things that God wants you to do at a certain level or a certain um, uh, intensity, you won't be able to do it because these connections like ticks on an animal will drain you dry. And it's important to know that sometimes the enemy is not trying to stop you. He just trying to hinder you. The enemy is not trying to, because he can't, he can't stop you, but guess what? He can slow you up. He can divert you. He can cause you to waste time, right? The children of Israel experienced this, that they had an 11 day journey that took them 40 years wandering around in stupidity, right? Um, you know, <laughs> what do I call that? I call that sugar stupid, sugar stupid. It's sugar stupid because guess what, right? It, you seem to be like, oh, life is going as normal, but you don't realize that you're on this proverbial treadwheel that's not going anywhere. You're on this proverbial treadwheel that just got you running and you're exerting energy and you have the connections and you have the, the uh, things that you're hanging out, the people that you're hanging out with. You got the folks calling you on the phone. You got uh, the friends. You got the Facebook likes. You got all of that stuff, but you're not really going anywhere. That's because not all connections connect. Some things is, is meant, some connections are brought into your life to disconnect you from what's important. There are certain things, there's a, there's a old uh, poem that talks about the tyranny of the urgent, the tyranny of the urgent, right? Where, you know, some urgent stuff, you know, stuff that we, we feel like, I gotta make this answer now. This is how salesmen make their living. They make their living by forcing you through marketing strategies, through, you know, uh, talking to you, to joking with you, to laughing with you. They make all these strategies to get you to buy now. Don't think about it. Don't contemplate it. No, think about it now. This is why the word of God says, don't make provisions for the flesh. Because if you make provision for the flesh, the flesh is going to tell you, I need it and I need it now, right? If you make um, these choices based upon the urgent, then guess what? You're going to miss what's important because of what you're doing urgently. You're going to miss the stuff that God has for you because you're spending more time preoccupied. And honestly, I look in my own life and sometimes in my own life, I had to cut off certain friendships, right? Yeah, Ifia, because some friendships, some, some connections are sugar stupid. They're, they're sweet on one side, but it's just stupid. It's, it's a waste of time. Come on, think about your own life. How many things have you connected yourself to in your lifetime that when you were doing it, you had a good time, you had fun, you had ups and downs, but when you look at it afterwards, you say, guess what? That was a waste of time. That was a waste of time. It was a connection that you had, but it became something that was a waste of time right? So now I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 13. And like I said, we won't be before you long at all. As a matter of fact, let me put this in right now. Hold on one second, because y'all know me. I want to, I want to get this. I'm going to get so good with this until there we go. All right. 
So now I want y'all to pay attention, right? Matthew chapter 13, right? We gonna, we gonna get into this. We gonna hit it. We gonna quit it, right? So here it is. Matthew chapter 13. And when you get to Matthew chapter 13, I'm gonna read from verse 24 to 30. Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30. Look at what it says. Another parable he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. First of all, let me stop there for a second. You already should be getting the point with this scripture, right? First of all, there's a kingdom of heaven. There's God's way. And then there's your and my way, right? The word of God says, all we like sheep have turned astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. But God laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. So the fact of the matter is when I look at my life, all practically every mess up that I had in my life, I can point to a time where I was disobedient. I can point to a time where I wasn't really doing what God told me to do, right? So he says the kingdom of heaven, God has his kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. So first of all, the word of God says that God has planted you a holy vine, a, a perfect vine. He's giving you that pure seed, that pure seed of Christ. He says, so how did you become a de de degenerate plant? In fact, Paul told the church in Galatians, uh, Galatia, he told them, he says, who have bewitched you? Who has bewitched you to think that your salvation is based upon your good work? Who's messed you up? Who's gotten your mind? Come on. Some of y'all, you know, when you first got saved, my God, you believe God. If God said it, you believe it and that settles it. But now along the way, now you got your boo, you got your bae, you got this, you got that. And now you're sitting there going, well, uh, uh, pastor, I know the word says it, but uh, uh, um, I, I just, God hasn't revealed that to me. What happened to you? What happened? Connections. Connection. Look at what he says. But while men slept, slept you fell asleep. You fell asleep at the wheel. You fell asleep at the wheel. You stopped being discerning. You stop being um, prayerful like you should. Why? Because they occupied your time. They occupied your time. You didn't have enough time to pray. You didn't have enough time to get in your word. You didn't have enough time to fast. You didn't have not enough time to consecrate yourself. Well, because why? Every day they was telling you, hey, hey, let's go out on a date. Hey, let's go here. Hey, look, look what you and your word. I mean, come on now. How many times have you experienced something where someone called you and they said, oh, did I disturb you? I said, no, I was sitting here studying the word. They'd be like, oh, OK, well, how you been? How you been? I'm studying the word. Let me study the word, right? And so you got to watch those connections because while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. He sowed weeds among the good seed, the wheat that God has planted in you. And when he sowed them, he left those jokers there. He left baby kids with you. He left all that stuff. Have you ever done something? Let me ask you a question. Has anybody ever done something, right? Where you did something and somebody asked you to do them a favor and they were talking, talking, talking. And they said, well, if you could just do this for me or, or if you could just take me here. And then what they told you to take them, what you thought is that you were just taking them to the store. You didn't know that they wanted you to wait then they want to go to five other stores because that store didn't have everything they need. And the next thing you know, you've been riding around for hours. And have you ever sat in a car or have you ever sat in your home, maybe watching their kids or watching their cat or watching their dog or watching this? And in your mind, you said, how in the world I got here? You fell asleep. You fell asleep. He said, they went his way. The enemy went his way. After he dropped that mess off at your lap, he went his way because it was only meant to hinder you. It says, but when the grain, when your good things had sprouted and produced a crop, a crop, then also the weeds also sprout. The weeds also sprout, right? They came forth, right? So the servants of the owner came and said, sir, do you, did you not sow good seed in your field? He said, well, how then are there weeds? 
He said, an enemy has done this. The servant said, do you want us to then go up and pull up the weeds as quickly as possible? He says, no, lest while you gather up the weeds, you also uproot the wheat with them. Now, let me tell you where this is messed up. Some people, like for example, if you connect your heart, You've connected your heart to somebody who God didn't send to you. You connect your heart now in order for, if God was to come and just rip that person out your life, guess what? You would be pissy mad with God. You would be upset, right? If, if some preacher came to you and said, girl, boy, you in sin, break off that relationship right now in the name of Jesus. Guess what? You walk out the church. Why? Right? Because your wheat, your wheat never got strength. You never got maturity. You never got discipline. Those things were only coming to waste your time, to waste your time and to get your eyes off of the father and onto the temporal things. Look at what he says. He said, but let them both grow up into the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gra gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat in my barn. So now God wants to clear you. He wants to clean you up. God wants to release you from those things, right? But you have entangled your heart because you fell asleep. Because look at God's promises for you. In Psalms chapter 91, verses seven, seven to eight, it says a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you see, look and see the reward of the wicked. So what God's plan is for me is that any wicked person that comes into my life, that I would see my reward and I would see that they would be destroyed and I would be blessed. That I would see that every trap that they set for me, guess what? They themselves would fall into it. This is God's perfect plan for us. But the fact is we fall asleep. Even when the word of God talks about the 10 virgins, it says 10 virgins, five were wise and five were foolish. But it says, when the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and fell asleep. Everybody fell asleep, right? Honestly, there are times in my life where I've fallen asleep. Why? And it's times in your life, as super spiritual as you are, as, as super anointed as you are, guess what? There's times you fall asleep at the wheel. There's times the Lord got to tell you, wait a minute, I never told you to do that. I never told you to get involved with that. I told you to put that back. I told you not to go there. I told you not to go. And, and we have to learn the hard way, right? Do I have any witnesses this evening that you had to learn the hard way? Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for God not killing us along the way. Thank God for him saying, look at my child. Look, my child is just sugar stupid. Sugar stupid. Sweet and stupid at the same time. It makes it a little easier, a little palatable, right? But here it is, right? You have to be careful of these connections. I want you to look with me in Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. And believe it or not, we're almost done, right? Got a little bit more. Genesis chapter 15, because I believe the Holy Spirit is going to speak to your heart tonight without my words. Amen. Glory to his name. Amen. So Genesis chapter 15, I want you to look at verse one. First of all, it says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a, vis in a vision saying, do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward, right? So God is telling Abram, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I got you. God is saying, don't be afraid. I'm in your corner. Don't be afraid. No matter what goes on in your life, I'm here for you. Right away, Abram's next statement was, but I ain't got no child. Now, God could have took that as an insult and say, wait a minute. I'm telling you that I'm going to be your exceeding great reward. And you still worry about having a child. God says, look, let me tell you something. The child you think is your child is not going to be your child. That's not going to be your inheritance. Your inheritance is going to come from your own loins and through the loins, through the womb of your wife, Sarah. It's going to come through both of y'all. And the scripture says, look what it says in verse five. It says, 
Um, he says, then he, God, brought Abram outside and said, look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be, right? Okay, now, the reason why I'm bringing up this scripture in Genesis chapter 15, verse 1 and Genesis chapter 15, verse 5. Because keep in mind, God tells us in Jeremiah 29 and 11, it says, I know the plans that I have concerning you, thoughts of peace and not of evil to bless you and to give you an expected end. So guess what? God's plans for your and my life are blessings. God's plans for our lives is that we might be the head and not the tail. God's plans for your and my life that we should be successful. The word of God says in Psalms chapter one, it talks about that. Um, but but the, the, the man that trusts in God and that stays in his word both day and night and meditates in his word both day and night shall be like a tree planted by the living rivers of water whose leaf shall come out in due season and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Did you know that if you were living for your father, anything that you decide to do has to work? Anything that you put your mind to, it has to work. Anything that you decide to take on as a project, it's got to work. Any idea that you come up with has got to be perfect and got to work. Why? Because if God be for you, who can be against you? If God backs you, then guess what? Even what you do when you say, God, lead me, God, guide me. Guess what? That thing has got to come out perfect. That thing has got to come out perfect powerful, right? When you believe that God, look, if you believe that God is for you, if you believe that he's your father, if you're like me, everything you do, you bring it to him. Lord, can I do this? Lord, can I do that? Lord, can I do this? Lord, can I do that? Today, and I ain't going to tell y'all what I did, but today, right? Um, there was something I wanted to do. It was a spur of the moment. And I said right away, I said, Lord, I said I wasn't going to do this, but Lord, can I do this today? And the Lord said, go right ahead. And so I did it, right? Now, if I come online and I tell everybody every single thing that I did, they'd be like, whoa, whoa, pastor, what's going on? The fact is, is that if you allow for God to go before you, then God understands your frame. He understands that you are nothing but dust. Now, I'm not talking about sinful stuff. I ain't talking about doing unrighteous things. Lord, can I go to that hotel room with that girl? No, I ain't talking about that stuff. Okay. I'm talking about th there are things that God will allow you, right? There are things that God will allow you to, to have freedom. What did God tell David? God told David when David sh sinned and, and slept with Bathsheba, killed Uriah, her husband, uh, tried to hide the pregnancy, tried to uh, take her on as a wife to act like he's honorable, right? And when David said against thee and thee alone have I sinned, what did God tell him? God said, I gave you your master's wife. I gave you your master's throne. I gave you all those things. And God said, if that wasn't enough for you, I would have given you more. My God, can you imagine that God says, he says it is his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now, it ain't about you and I that God is at our beck and call to do whatever we want, but God knows who's a better servant, somebody who's happy or somebody who's abused. I don't know about you. I do better work when I love what I'm doing. I do better work when I'm excited about what I'm doing. I do better things, like even in a relationship. Come on, y'all know it's telling the truth. If you're in a relationship with somebody and you love that person and you guys are giddy with each other and you guys love each other, then guess what? It ain't no problem to, to massage your back. It's not no problem to shave your head. It's not no problem. Uh <laughs> I was about to say, I was about to say, it's not a problem to shave your chin, ladies. I was about to say that, but I'm not going to say that, even though I did say that, right? Sugar stupid, right? 
uh, it's not a problem, right, <laughs> to to do things for one another when you love for each, when you have love for each other. It's not a problem, and so God recognizes. He recognizes that you and I will serve better when we are happy. We'll serve better when we are fulfilled, right? This is why I told you a couple of weeks ago, it is not God's will that you be broken. It is not God's will that you be broken hearted. It's not God's will that you be frustrated and aggravated. It's not God's will. It is God's will that you be happy. It is God's will that you be fulfilled and content. For the Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain, right? And so God says, I'll give you good stuff in your life. Why? Because you'll serve me better, right? You'll say, listen, how grateful would I be, right? If God says, okay, son, I'm going to give you $10. Okay, I'm grateful. Grateful for the $10. Thank you, Lord. But let's say, let's be honest. And I know some of y'all want to be super spiritual about it. But let's say if God says, okay, instead of giving you $10, I'll give you $10 billion. Would you be a little bit more grateful? Be honest. I know I would. I would be like, whoa. Thank you, Lord, right? Because why? The bigger the blessing, hopefully, the bigger the gratefulness. That God, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for how you have entrusted this to me. The word of God says that if you've been faithful over that which is least, God will entrust to you the more, right? And I've seen in my life, the reason why God has entrusted me with some big stuff is because I've been faithful over the little stuff, right? And, and it's all about faithfulness, right? And so here it is, Abram, when God says, I'm going to be your best reward, Abraham said, you didn't give me a child. But God said, you're going to have a child. And God says, I want you to look at the stars. Why am I bringing this up? I'm bringing this up because people of God, the word of God says, it has not entered your hearts and your mind, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. In other words, what God has in store for your life is more than anything you can imagine. And so because of that, you have to be careful for connections because those connections can sabotage the stuff you haven't even seen yet. I'll say that again. You have to be careful of your connections because those connections can hinder you from seeing the stuff and experiencing the stuff you haven't even seen yet. Abraham was not thinking about having another baby. But God's plans were different than his. I'm sure when Abraham was younger and Sarah was younger, he thought, hey, yeah, we're going to have plenty of children. Especially sons, because sons were considered the legacy of their fathers because they carry on the name. In fact, if you remember when John, John the Baptist was named and they asked his mother, what was his name? And he said, she said, his name shall be called John. And the father couldn't speak because, because he doubted God and God took away his tongue. So he couldn't speak. And he asked for a pen. And when he asked for a pen, they said, why are you going to name him John when your husband's name is not John? There's nobody in your family named John. She named him John because that's what God said his name would be. And when the father agreed and said, on paper, his name shall be called John, his lips were loosed, right? His lips were loosed. What am I saying to you tonight? The plans that God has for you is not something that you can even fathom or imagine. Your connections are key 
because connections will help you to be better than what you are today. If your connection can't help you be better, it's a bad connection. Do you hear me? And I'm talking about better in who you are, what you are to do, your faithfulness, and your commitment. If it can't help you, it's a bad, it's a weight. And that's what Hebrews says. Hebrews chapter 12. Let's turn there real quick. Hebrews chapter 12. And I'm almost done. Almost done, people of God. Hebrews chapter 12. Look what it says in verse 1 and 2. No, let's look at verse 1. It says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So too many of us are not watching those connections. We're falling asleep behind the wheel. We're saying yes to things without even praying about them first. We're saying yes to people without even praying about it first to say, God, is this what you want for me? Even if it seems to fulfill a certain need. Because too many of us, we are, um, we are motivated by our desires and by our needs, right? And so if you need money and then somebody offer you money, it's so easy just to say yes without first praying about it. Because sometimes God is not trying to bless you through that avenue. God has a different avenue. But this avenue that you have accepted will pull you away from the place and the position that God would have you to be at. That's why my shirt says, stop boxing, stop petty boxing with old battles. Stop, stop petty boxing with stuff that the word of God says, the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. So your needs are not supplied through traditional means. Your, your, your future is not made bright by, by uh, um, what the world says is, 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 is the method or the path that you have to take. Your, your um, success ratio is not based upon what the world says is what will make you successful. And these are the material possessions of those who got it together. No, listen, even if you got messed up credit, cause look, I'm here to tell you, you could have messed up credit and God will give you credit. He'll give you credit through an institution that will approve you. Do I have any witnesses this evening? You don't have to sell your soul. You don't have to imprison yourself. You don't have to do that. Now, sometimes God will send people in your life to bless you and they will have the heart of God. And guess what? It will not entangle you. It will not enslave you because not every connection came from God. Let's look in the word of God. Let's look in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Thank you, Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And when you get to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, yes, thank you, Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and let's look at 13, verse 13, down to verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 to 15. Look at what it says. For such are false apostles. Did y'all know that there's false apostles out there? That they are false pastors, they are false teachers, they are false preachers, right? Not everybody is false, but there are false ones out there. He says, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ, and no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform, transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. So, so I'm here to tell you that just because somebody says, praise the Lord, 
don't mean they're talking about the same Lord. Just because somebody said God told them something don't mean it's God Jehovah. Because the word of God says there's a God of this world, lowercase g. And so, so many of us have experienced deception. Why? Because we violated the word. Don't blame them. Blame you. You violated the word, but the word says study to show yourself approved unto God. The word of God says a workman needing not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The word of God says also, it says, work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. So too many of us have gotten ourselves caught up with, with people and things and we've aligned ourselves in <clears throat> such a way that we have entangled ourselves. We have ensnared ourselves. We made promises that later on we said, man, I wish I would have shut up. We've committed ourselves to people, whereas we should not have committed ourselves. We have to be careful because every connection don't always connect. Let's look at Matthew chapter 13 again. But when you get to Matthew chapter 13, Let's look at verse 22, I believe it is. Yeah. Verse 22. It says, Now he who had received seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. So guess what? Just because you save, y'all better stop saying, Oh, don't worry. God is going to work it out in the end. Sugar stupid. Sugar stupid. Well, God is going to work it out in the end. Well, if I'm wrong, God will work it out in the end. No, you might just lose something because you're wrong. You got to be careful. You got to be careful because not everything that you see as good is stuff that God has for you. I don't care if it's with your family. I don't care if it's, come on, come on, come on, y'all. Come on, talk back to me. There are some of us that you could see the wrong in the world. You could see the wrong in the church, but you can't see wrong in your own house. How your own house has you enslaved. You over there pulling your hair out concerning your children, pulling your hair out concerning your spouse, and instead of putting your eyes on God, every time they tell you to jump, you jump. Sugar, stupid. I put a little sugar on it so that you don't get offended that I said stupid. Sugar, stupid. Because we don't, the word of God says, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. We know that he uses whatever it is. The word of God says, where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. So if you treasure your children, that's who the devil is coming after. Your children. He's coming after your children to use them to manipulate you. And to get you out of God's will, just because things are semi-okay right now, you think it's cool. But where were you when the stuff, when all hell was breaking out? You were falling out all over the altar. Oh, Lord, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I need thee, Lord. Help me, Lord. Sugar, stupid. Because of the fact of that when things were chaotic, you were calling on the name of the Lord. Now that things are decent, you put God second and you put the same knuckleheads first. Are you kidding me? You better open up your eyes. Open up your eyes. Listen, 
Psalms chapter one says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the, that's okay, fear. you can finish it, you can finish it, uh, who walks in the, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seats of the scornful, right? He says, blessed is the one who doesn't stand in the way of sinners. And sometimes, how do we stand in the way? Yeah, we stand in the way by being in poor examples. That's one way. Here's another way you stand in the way. You stand in the way because every mess that they get involved with, you try to rescue them. And because you, because you are anointed by God and God blesses you, right? Then guess what? You now help them out of their mess so that they could jump right back into it. Sugar. Y'all understand. Y'all going to get this. Y'all going to get this. Y'all going to get that sometimes it, it has to be somewhat hilarious, not in a funny way, but in a sort of a precocious way, in a sort of like, oh my God, I can't believe you did that. Because the same people that drive us up the wall, we put them ahead of God all the time. Same people who irritate us. Stop petty boxing with old battles. You better, you better figure out whose side you on. You better figure out whose side you on. Figure out whose side you on. And, and, and make up your mind that if, if I'm going to serve the Lord and someone in my family is not going to serve the Lord, then guess what? They ain't going to like the things I say. They're going to call me all kinds of names because they don't agree with it. So you got to make up your mind. Either you're going to deal with that and be okay with it or either you're going to compromise every single time. And they happy. They're happy because you know why? Because you're a slave. You're entangled. They could call you at a moment's notice and you're going to drop everything for them. Everything to make them feel comfortable, to serve them, to do all the things to make them feel good about themselves. Sugar what? Mm -hmm. Sugar what? All right. So he says, the thorns are the cares of this world the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches, they choke the word. And even though you are spiritual, even though you are anointed by God, guess what? It will now cause for you to be unfruitful because of the weeds and the connections you got in your life. A few more scriptures, Mark chapter four, we'll find these same things in Mark chapter four, Mark chapter four. And, um, Verse uh, 19, uh, 18 and 19. Mark chapter four, verses 18 and 19. It says, now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word <clears throat> and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in, choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. It becomes unfruitful. Your life becomes unfruitful. Sometimes when folks call me on the phone and if, you, and God forbid, if you're watching tonight and you happen to wonder why sometimes I didn't pick up your call it's because every time my phone rings, I look at it and say, God, should I pick it up? A lot of people think I'm looking at my phone because I'm like, I ain't going to call this person. I ain't going to, no, I don't got time to waste time with that. I'm going, when someone called me, I'm like, Lord, should I pick this call up? And if the Lord says no, then it's no. Simple as that. If the Lord tell me to call you back, I call you back. If the Lord tell me not to call you back, then I don't call you back. Why? Because some people are so sugar. Uh, you Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some people are so sweetly stupid until they don't even know that they're stupid. They don't know that they go like a pancake. They from one thing to the next. 
One time they love you, next time they hate you. One time they agree with you, next time they can't stand you. One time they talking well about you and praise the Lord, God bless you, Pastor Most High, you honorable man of God. And the other times they're ready to come at your neck. I don't know about y'all. I ain't no punk. And God is not going to allow me to be put into no situation where I might have to hip toss somebody in front of Jesus or throw somebody down a flight of steps. Yes, yes, I will. Why? For the Bible says there is a time for peace, but there's also a time for war, right? And sometimes telling somebody, please stop, ain't going to work. Sometimes you need to, mm, like mama used to say, if you haven't chosen to hear, you've chosen to feel. And guess what? I'm a firm believer. I, I have a, listen, y'all, check this out. I have a friend. I have a friend today who is saved because I beat his butt. I'm telling you right now, I ain't going to tell his name because I don't want to embarrass him, right? But I have a friend today that him and I was hanging out and the Lord told me to minister to him. I was a young man in the Lord. The Lord told me to minister to him. And this dude was like mocking. He was mocking the church. He was mocking Christians. He was mocking this. Y'all, as God is my witness, I heard the Lord said, beat his butt. <laughs> I heard the Lord said, jump on him. And I did. Unfortunately, the boy mule kicked me across the room, right? And we started tossing. We started tossing. We started fighting. I was bloodied a little bit. He was bloody a little bit. But guess what? That night he accepted Jesus and to this day, he's still saved. And so am I. Okay. See, see some of y'all, y'all think, oh, the Lord would never tell you to do that. The Lord, he is, he just, he beckons and pleads and he says, oh, come unto me, all you who are weary. Oh, I just want to hug you. Oh, you know, we sing those songs that I love some of the songs, you know, I love some of these songs. So I'm not mocking them, but I'm just using it in the context of my conversation. You know, wrap me in your arms. Oh, Lord, wrap me on. No, sometimes God allows you to go to prison. God allows you to go to prison. Sometimes God allows you to lose that baby. Sometimes God allows you to lose that, that relationship. Sometimes God allows you to lose your job. Sometimes God allows you to lose your health. Let's talk about the other side of our father. The other side of our father, spoken through the apostle Paul, said, when we come together, let's deliver that person to Satan for the destruction of their flesh that their spirit might be saved. Don't tell me God is all about the sweet, the flowery, and the beautiful. Oh, praise the Lord. No, sometime God will knock you down off your horse, Saul, knock you on your butt before you can see. So what God does for me, he knows that I'm okay with opening up a can if I have to. He knows that about me, right? He knows that. So God doesn't allow me to be in situations where he knows that I'll be quick with <laughs> saying something. So sometimes the Lord would tell me, go home. The Lord told me, don't pick up that phone. The Lord would tell me, like I had somebody the other day, one of these, uh, a, a friend of mine, a former friend of mine, I should say. But this, this friend of mine, yeah, Dorothea, Dorothea, um, a friend of mine texted me the other day and was like saying all kinds of craziness, all kinds of craziness. And, and we're not a close friend, but I was sent in his life to kind of help him, right? And this dude have a problem with drinking. And this man, every time he get drunk, he talking all this stuff. And I told him, I said, look, this is it. This is it. I've been trying to help you. I've been trying to encourage you every single time I've been there for you. Now it's time for you to get yourself off your butt and do something for yourself. So I said, I'm done. I said, when you want to get right, you know exactly where I am. Come for me. Because sometimes people will sit there and be like, oh, pastor, uh, I just need you to pray with me that I get a breakthrough. Or they may come to you, right? They may come to you and they may say, 
oh, pastor, oh, I just pray that you would pray with me that because I just want to be close to God. And it's been 25 years and they still want to be close to God. Listen, sometimes you got to let stuff go. Sometimes you got to cut people off. Sometimes you got to say enough is enough. I done told you enough. I done come at you from 50,000 ways. And I done said, no, 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 no. You still don't get it? Blocked. Cut off. Cut off. Why? Because some connections don't connect. One more scripture for you. Hebrews chapter 3. Lord, help us. Hebrews chapter 3. When you get to Hebrews chapter 3, I want you to look at um, verse 12 to 15. Let, let's look at, no, let's go back a little bit. Let's go from verse 7 to 15. Hebrews chapter 3. Verse 7 to 15. Look at what it says. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion, in the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works forty years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, They always go astray in their hearts and have not known my ways. You hear what God is saying? So I swore. Look what God said. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Okay, I know we just brushed over that because we're so used to God being so sweet and kind and lovely. Look at what he said. Let's go back. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as they did in the rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works 40 years. 40 years they've been working with me. 40 years God has been with us. 40 years God has been helping us. Or how many years the Lord has been with you. Therefore, I was angry with that generation. Why? He said because they always go astray in their hearts. He keep rescuing them and they keep going back. He keep rescuing them and they keep going back. He keeps cleaning them up and they keep jumping back in the mud. So God said, they have not, they always go astray in their heart. They have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. How many times are you going to keep denying what the Lord is saying? How many times are you going to keep coming and maybe even on my Facebook Live, coming on my Facebook Live, praise the Lord, Pastor, instead of looking at what God is saying to you. He says, beware, brethren, or sisters, lest there be in, in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. You have to be careful. But exalt one another daily while it is called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is very deceitful and it'll harden you. It'll corrode you. It'll corrupt you, right? It says, for we have become partakers of Christ if, if, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. People of God, I'm here to tell you, watch your connections. Watch your connections. Because not all connections connect. Some connections are not meant to connect you. It is meant to disconnect you from what's really important. Watch your connections. So let us pray. Amen. Because that's my time. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you thanking you, Lord God, for this time and 
this opportunity that we've had to, Lord God, share with your people. Father, I pray for each and every one of us, myself included, that God, you would open up our eyes and that you would help us to see the connections that we are connected to as to whether or not they are of and from you or whether they are just a waste of our time. Lord God, help us and give us holy discernment. Open our eyes to see, ears to hear. For you said, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say unto the churches. Lord God, bless us with wisdom, with knowledge, and mostly with understanding. Father, may your will be done in our lives, and may we always only accept the connections that come from you. Give us discernment to reject the connections that the enemy has sent. Lord God, help us to see clearly what you have in store for us. We thank you right now for you are our God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. No more sugar stupid. X that out of your life. No more. It is time to be real and allow God to have his way in your life. God bless you. I love you all with the love of Christ. Have a blessed and marvelous evening. Thank you for joining with me. If this video has been good for you, please share it with someone else. Share it with someone else that they might also watch their connections. Be careful because the enemy is looking more now than ever before to connect us with silly things. And so God bless you. Don't worry, Pamela. God bless you. You can come back and watch it once it's posted. Amen. It'll be on my YouTube channel as well as on my um, Twitter page as well as on this page as well. So you can watch it once again. Uh, start a watch party for someone else to watch it. Amen. And so God bless you all. Thank you for joining with me. I love you all. Thank you for your support and your love and your um, kind words that you send to me. I thank God for each and every one of you. May the Lord bless you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace in the name of Jesus. Have a blessed and marvelous evening in Jesus' name. God bless you.